Welcome whiskey discoverers. This is Mark from Whiskey Whistle bringing you whiskey review number 53. Today we are headed to Japan. I'm really really excited about that. Japanese whiskey has become such a huge huge thing all over the world. Today we're going to be looking at Yamazaki and uh, I think Yamazaki also really needs no introduction. Uh, a couple of years, well no, that was last year 2014 for the 2015 uh, Whiskey Bible by Jim Murray, the Yamazaki 2013 Sherry Cask Edition was awarded World Whiskey of the Year. Uh, anyway, so there has been a lot of uh, hype about this brand and well, um, I think pretty much everybody was trying to find a bottle of that uh, Sherry Cask from 2013. Most almost all of us unsuccessfully. Um, now, here in Korea though, oddly enough, even though we're right next door, not a lot of Japanese whiskey is sold. So Koreans tend to be really focused on uh, Scotch whiskey. And to a lesser degree, some American whiskeys have become popular as well. So Japanese whiskey, however, is beginning to also become more and more popular here too. So uh, out and about uh, in the city, I stopped by one place I like to shop uh, for whiskey, which is Nambe Moon Market. Uh, there's a, a special uh, imported goods shopping mall. And uh, in, in that place, there's a few whiskey sellers. And one of them, lo and behold, had a, a whole bunch of miniatures. So I found myself a Yamazaki 12-year-old miniature, which is what you're looking at here right now. So there it is, the Yamazaki 12-year-old. So this would be, uh, I guess, second from the, the bottom. There's an unaged, uh, no age statement whiskey that is the uh, entry level. Then there's the 12, and then it goes up from there. 18 is apparently something to die for. And, um, well, I paid quite a hefty price for this one as well. This was 25,000 won which is about 20, 22 or 23 dollars US. And uh, well, since it's so small, I didn't want to taste it in advance and ruin the presentation. So this is going to be, I guess my, maybe my third or fourth uh, on camera tasting. So pros and cons, I don't get to really um, explore the tastes so, so deeply because I have to do this in uh, 15 minutes or less, give or take, hopefully less. So there it is. So we're gonna crack that one open. And uh, let's see what we find in here. Yep, smells like whiskey. Uh, this is 43% alcohol by volume. I'll set that right there. And uh, 50, 50 milliliters or 5 centiliters. And uh, anything else to mention? No. So let's get that poured, shall we? I'm very excited about this. That looks like roughly about 30 milliliters. I'm going to leave a little bit because I have a very good friend, his name is Fred, and Fred and I, uh, we were searching and searching high and low for the Yamazaki Sherry Cask about a year ago, unsuccessfully. So uh, I think he would really love to try that. Okay, so, interesting. We're going to let that sit for a little while and uh, there's going to be a very, very short uh, advertisement right now. Welcome back. Let's talk about Yamazaki a little bit. First of all, uh, what is this brand? Where does it come from? And um, uh, well, what makes it so, so popular? Yamazaki Distillery actually happens to be the very first the first commercial distillery uh, in in uh, in Japan. I was about to say Scotland, <laughs> and uh, well, apparently the history of distilling uh, whiskey that is goes back perhaps to the 1890s. So 
So fairly long history. It was founded in 1923 by Shinjiro Tori uh, and uh, in the outskirts of Kyoto. Okay, this happens to be <clears throat> excuse me. This happens to be owned by Suntory. And Suntory, you may be aware, or you may not be aware, Suntory is the parent company, and one of the subsidiaries is known as Beam Suntory, uh, Beam being the Jim Beam, the Jim Beam Beam, okay? So uh, that gives you an idea of the scope of their operation. They also own some uh, Scotch whiskey distilleries, not the least of which is um, Lafroig from uh, the Isle of Isla. Uh, anyway, so very, very large operation, owning a very, very large distillery. Six wash stills, six spirit stills. I couldn't find a liters per annum um, output uh, statement anywhere. Perhaps someone knows that, and if you do, you can leave a comment. But I'm guessing that is gonna be in the millions of liters, um, probably five, I would, would guess okay so quite large uh, pretty much on par with the largest of the scotch whiskey distilleries um, they are said to have the largest market share in japan for single malts and um, well uh, that's a fairly large country uh, 112 million i do believe if, uh, the last time i read uh, so approaching 120 million that's uh, about a third the size of USA, and probably uh, Japanese consume uh, at least as much, if not more, whiskey per year uh, than Americans do. Uh, they're also exporting a lot now, based on all that uh, all that height uh, and f uh, f uh, fur that's, that they've developed. Okay, some other interesting things to note. There's a connection with uh, Nika Whiskey. That's another one of uh, the big companies in Japan that makes whiskey. So uh, the founder, Shinjiro Tori, he hired uh, Masataka Taketsuru, um, who would later found Nika Whiskey and Yoichi Distillery. And uh, uh, Taketsuru was in charge of the production at first and he cut his teeth in Scotland in fact studying chemistry uh, apparently uh, during a summer and then apprenticing at a variety of distilleries uh, not the least of which was Longmorn. Um, anyway the current uh, person behind uh, the whiskey, uh, well, I can smell that from here, uh, is rolling through and his name is Shinji uh, Fukuyo. So Shinji Fukuyo is the master blender for Suntory whiskey uh, as well as for um, Yamazaki and their other distillery which uh, uh, you'll see rolling through on the screen there which is Hakushu. Okay and uh, I par pardon me if my pronunciation is not bang on. Um, there are some similarities between oh there he is. Okay so that's uh, Shinji Fukuyo. Uh, and uh, some similarities between Korean language and J Japanese, however, uh, not, uh, not exactly the same, are they? Okay, so let's get into the smelling and then the tasting, and we'll talk about the finish of this whiskey. And we're going to have another short advertisement right here. Okay, welcome back. Let's smell this together, shall we? quite floral and there's certainly some wood in there so there's a vanilla oakiness to it but there's also there's also a kind of a tropical fruity aspect to this as well and again this is the first time I've ever ever tasted Yamazaki Uh, apparently, they use, um, at least to some degree, whether that's finishing or completely a complete aging, they do use a lot of uh, Mizunara casks. Mizunara is uh, the Japanese variety of oak. And, um, 
you know, European oak is different from American oak, is different from Japanese oak. Um, okay, so country by country, there are different varieties. And even if they're the same variety, you will get some difference uh, from country to country. For example, Canadian oak, which should be the same variety as uh, American oak, but um, there's a company that, that did age some Canadian whiskey in Canadian oak casks, and the results had some, well, there was some influence there. Anyway, what do I smell here? There's some spice, some cinnamon. There's also um, a green plum note. Um, which is something that is um, had in Korea here as well. Uh, those Asian green plums. Hmm. I can't quite wrap my head around that one. It really does smell elegant though. And I also smell something that is not dissimilar to a certain Taiwanese uh, whiskey that I've uh, reviewed uh, twice before, whose name I won't mention. Hmm. So I'm getting some um, unripe as well as uh, some ripe fruits. Maybe an apricot in there, dried apricot. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, I don't have enough time to really delve into the nose that deeply here on camera, so let's get into the tasting, shall we? Cheers, everyone, and cheers to uh, Mr. Shinji Fukuyo. Thank you very much, sir. Hmm. Well, I really do quite like that. Now, if you are a person who is uh, really into sweet flavors, this may not be quite for you. Um, there is a touch of sweetness at the beginning, and then it just hurries through into some sour, delicious sour, as well as some dry, bitter notes as well. Let's try that one more time. I really, really like this. Now, I think you may know, if you've been watching Whiskey Whistle, you may know that I tend to gravitate a little bit more towards uh, sour and bitter flavors rather than sweet ones, uh, as well as uh, the aged flavors that you find in aged whiskeys, long aged whiskeys. This one's relatively young, but again, don't forget that's the, uh, the age statement is the youngest whiskey in the bottle. There could also be some older whiskeys at play here. Yeah, there's a touch of leather building in there as well. Hmm. What I noticed on the palate, uh, the palate of this whiskey, um, the Asian plums um, and somehow right now I am drawing a blank of the name of Asian plums in, in Korean language. Uh, that's okay. Anyway, uh, uh, Koreans who are watching, I think there's about 10% of my viewers seem to be from Korea. Uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, Koreans like to make, um, uh, well, like a juice out of it. 
and uh, they use that if they have indigestion. Uh, and also, uh, there's wine made from that as well. What is that plum wine called? Um, anyway, not important. Notice with time, you're getting a little bit more vanilla coming through. Maybe a hint of There's a hint of a chocolate toffee note coming through too. And I've said that a few times, but kind of like Tootsie Roll. Hmm. And it's building. I think this is something you can really take your time with and kick back, take a sip, come back to it every five, 10 minutes. And you'll see a real change in flavors as you sip. Okay, let's taste that one more time. Hmm. There's also a fruit that's popular here called uh, called a quince, um, or guava, um, I believe, in Korean language. And it's really hard, it's really firm. Um, it's got a lot of citrus type of flavors in it, uh, and it smells just lovely. It's too tough to eat. Um, it'd be like a, almost like a woody, very woody pear, really, really hard but uh, uh, juiced or made into a tea, uh, it is just lovely. And I'm getting that plum, the Asian plum, uh, the green plum, as well as the, this quince note coming through. Mm. And um, it actually gets a little bit sweeter with time too. Uh, we're gonna try that one more time. Oh, quite, quite nice. Okay, let's add a little touch of water to that. Swirl that around a little bit. So Japanese whiskey is said to be most like Scotch whiskey in terms of the other big producing countries and those are Scotland of course Ireland um, USA I won't use that finger USA <laughs> Canada and Japan uh, so those are the traditional whiskey making countries so Japan is said to be most related to Scotland and I also already mentioned the uh, uh, the apprenticeship of the first master distiller of Yamazaki Distillery. Um, so you can see the link there. And um, they're using copper stills, just like Scotland. They're using uh, oak casks uh, and following a similar process. It's nice they're using a lot of Japanese oak. Hopefully they have enough uh, stocks of that given their current demand. And due to that demand, they've been releasing a lot of no-age statement Japanese whiskeys. And well, like I think I've said before, if the price is right, I'm okay with non-age statement. I don't like to pay a lot uh, for uh, NAS whiskey unless I am really, really um, trusting of that particular distillery and that particular company. Okay, so with water, what happens here? It is much sweeter. More vanilla. The coffee note has dissipated somewhat. Coffee, the chocolate note. Mmm. 
Yes. A nice dark vanilla. A rich vanilla, a baking vanilla. One that's already been put to use and baked and, um, and there you go. Okay, and we'll taste that one more time. Cheers everyone. Thanks for watching. Mmm. So much sweeter. Didn't lose its sourness or uh, some of the dry bitter tones, but a lot of a lot of sweetness has come through through to the forefront. Still has the Asian plums and the quince notes in there. You know, I forgot to talk about the finish neat. That's too bad. Again, not having notes, I'm not. I don't have a prompt to rem remind myself to mention certain things. Um, we'll talk about the finish now. Then hmm. Quite dry. Those fruit flavors are still at play. Uh, some vanilla. There's an unusual flavor that I'm not really familiar with. That may be the uh, the uh, Mizunara oak. A little bit of pepper. A little bit of uh, pickled ginger. <clears throat> And there's still a bit of cinnamon and other baking spices noticed there as well. I notice, I should say. Why am I using <clears throat> a passive? <laughs> okay, well, should we try that last little bit? Why not? Otherwise, it's going to be wasted. Thank you so much for tuning in. Mmm. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you, ha if you would. And you can click the link right there at the bottom in the corner there. That would be the um, right-hand corner from your perspective, I do believe. Um, why would you want to subscribe? Well, you can connect with me a little bit more easily. You'll get all the updates. You'll be one of the first to be notified of when a new video has been released. And, um, well, I do really like to interact with my subscribers. And there's quite a few that I'm getting to know very, very well. And I really do thank all of my subscribers for that. Uh, it's been great so far. Uh, it's one of the joys of my day when I can connect with you. And some of you are in Korea, and I'm really hoping to meet you very soon. Many of you know that I have a very young third daughter here at home. She's a month and a week. Uh, so quite small, quite lovely, needing a lot of my attention. So I doubt I can get out very soon, but I really do hope uh, in the springtime with some of my subs uh, Korean subscribers, maybe we can have a, uh, a little Whiskey Whistle event. Okay, more on that soon. All right, so please try to subscribe. If you watched until now, thank you so much. And uh, stay tuned. There are more Japanese whiskey, Japanese whiskey whistles on the way. Okay, the next one, we're going to stick with Suntory, and we're going to be going to Hibiki. And here we have yet another elegant, what an elegant bottle, uh, another Hibiki, another Suntory whiskey from, from uh, Suntory. That was uh, redundant, sorry about that. So the 17-year-old Hibiki is next. And uh, this one, I have to thank Rory Wright in Winnipeg uh, for talking about Hibiki. Rory Wright, he was a stalwart in terms of sticking to single malts until he tried this one. So let's see if I would concur with the 
elegance and the the power of Hibiki. Okay, so that was Yamazaki, 12 year old. Oh, I didn't give it a whiskey whistle. Whiskey score, did I? Oh boy. Hmm. Well, it is different. I really do love this. Uh, it's a bit overpriced. Of course, that's not really talking about the whiskey itself. So I'm not going to take away points because of its price. It's got an age statement. It's 43% ABV. Let's give it 90 out of 100. So 90 out of 100 for the Yamazaki Single Malt Whiskey 12-year-old. That's a Japanese whiskey, one you should try. Try it at a bar. If you see a bottle and the price isn't too bad, go for it. You will not be disappointed. Um, if you want something a bit sweeter, then add a dash of water and there you go. 